to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, April 15th, the Fantasy Footballers back with you. Oh, what a day to talk running backs. Oh, what a day. Not bad. How you doing, Mike? I'm holding in there, man. I'm holding in. Holding in there? Yep. Okay. Holding in, like, just hang- like ha- I always say. Hanging by, in there? By, by holding in, I'm referring to uh, my tummy being held in by my... Uh, my underpants, elastic. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the stomach's a little. Most full people right now. are. They're either um, they're hanging in there or they're holding up, but they've never combined before, and that was a first. Why have they never combined? I well, you are the outlier. I'm of holding. The group. It, well, like I mean, you, things things you need to hold in. Well, you hold it together. You did have Chipotle for lunch. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> what I mean. Like, <laughs> suck it I, in. Yeah, I guess usually when you're holding things in, it's. Uh, yeah, I mean that's more like you're like oh self control. I need to hold this in. We'll have to display some self-control in the debates on today's show. We have our second running back rankings show, early running back rankings show, mm-hmm. only to be disrupted by this thing called the NFL draft, potentially. I can't wait. We and are soon. two weeks That's away, crazy. 14 weeks. days, and then we have the NFL draft. You just define two weeks for me. You, Thank you. Yeah. Are you doing well today, Jason? Are you holding, it, holding well. anything I'm, in? I'm, hold, <laughs> I'm holding out. Um, oh, you're holding out. Yeah, That's not different. like of the show or of a season. Just like same same premise as Mike. It's just belly related. So he's holding in. I'm holding out. And uh, well, it's good. I don't want to redo your contract. I mean, that'd yeah, be exactly complicated. Uh, we do have the running back rankings on today's show. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Thank you for tuning in, subscribing, listening to the show, watching over on youtubecom slash the Fantasy Footballers. Not just watching. They sometimes they click the bell and then they know when the next episode is. So I'm thanking those people as well. You can find the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com with the UDK Plus, a bunch of dynasty content in there right now. Yes, there is. Uh, the the second big update of it went live a week or two ago as the all the pro days ramped up and then the, the turnaround for the third part will be rather short as the NFL draft is approaching. There will be another full update after the NFL that draft. That is correct. Oh! What? Well, I mean, we, we have a very important announcement, Mike. It's the only announcement we'll make about this very important topic. You both look like you have no idea what I'm talking about. No, I, I do. I know what it is. I am still curious. I but forgot, I, but I'm, on, I'm, I'm with you now. Uh, oh, yeah! We, we <laughs> are... You with us, Jason? I'm here. This is very exciting. We don't we don't post this anywhere. Mm-mm. We'll never speak of it again. This will be the one time you hear it. Once a year. Uh, we are officially looking for a few more staff writers for the fantasy footballers. And you can find out what that means by heading to footclanhelp.com. You can submit a writing sample and an application over there. And then our team of uh, editorial superstars will take a look, and we'll take a look at it, and we're going to pick out a few more names, right? Bring a couple more on board of the team. Yeah. Very exciting times. And that's that. There it is. That's the one and only. It, see, this is why do we I do this. Do I repeat the we, URL? Uh, sure. If, if, you wanna, if you want a chance to write uh, for the fantasy footballers, you go to footclanhelp.com. We only mention this once on the show and this time of year because we really want the, you know, we want those – uh, you know, industry people who are really in on the the Footland, who get the brand and and understand the uh, show. The, the you show. listen to it, so Absolutely. you're hearing it right now. So there you go. You are who we want. Good luck. All right, moving on. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, uh, this is a very Exciting buy sell for me. Whew, this one's tough. Uh, because I kind of want I want to sit back and hear from both of you before I even speak. Uh, in part because I want to be informed. I have a I have Robbie Anderson on one of my dynasty league rosters, and we are buying and selling whether Robbie Anderson will repeat as a top twenty four fantasy wide receiver. He was twenty four last year. 
Yes. Started so hot. Absolutely. He started incredibly hot. Uh, DJ Moore also came through with a with a solid uh, fantasy year. Wide receiver 22 finish. Uh, the thing that was not fully projected for the Carolina Panthers was the breakout campaign from Curtis Samuel, who had 97 targets. He was the wide receiver 25. However, he has received a payday, and he has moved on to Washington. So that changes the situation drastically for Carolina. The addition, that's a lot of targets. That's a lot of targets that are available. The addition now, Christian McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey yeah. is going to come in and soak up probably all ninety-seven of those targets. But the biggest change is not actually Curtis Samuel. The biggest change is going from Teddy Bridgewater, who was fine, not good enough for Carolina apparently, as they spent the entire offseason. As soon as the season ended, they're like, "Okay, we got to figure out how we're going to replace Teddy Bridgewater," and they finally ended up. Kind of overpaying, in my opinion, for Sam Darnold. Is Sam Darnold that much better than Teddy Bridgewater? Any better it, that, than Teddy Bridgewater? Okay, oh, that's also another question. Another, I'll throw another question out there before you guys weigh in with your official buy-sell, which is how much of what we saw in the utilization of Robbie Anderson last year? I mean, 95 receptions is a lot of receptions. This was not Robbie Anderson of the New York days where he was a deep ball specialist and a big right. play. This was... He was a PPR type of player. How much of that was a smart coach and Matt Ja Rule uh, utilizing Teddy Bridgewater to his strength, which is right. being a short area type of uh -huh. quarterback? Or is this the scheme? Is this what he wants to do with Robbie Anderson? Now, if if we have a if we're going to presume smart head coach right. for Matt Ja Rule, what is the strength of Sam Darnold? Who? Well, he'll need to figure that out. Yeah, he's. We're gonna have to <laughs> see how smart. I can't tell you what it is. Um, so I'll, I'll hop in here. This is a, except that one throw that we just keep showing over and <laughs> it, over on Twitter. It's very good. That one throw. Um, it, I'll, I'll hop in because I'm I'm a strong buy. Um, I believe okay. that this is a, a is a clear buy. We just made our our wide receiver rankings. Um, went through those uh, in preparation for next week's shows and um. He is in my top 24. I was happy to is, is see DJ that. Is DJ Moore in there? Yes, he is also okay. in there. The way that I view it is this. I do think Sam Darnold could be an upgrade, but at worst, I, I don't think there's going to be any kind of a downgraded situation. Robbie Anderson's a good football player. He is a good wide receiver. And when you've got a guy who has done it deep uh, down the field and now has shown that he can do it, uh, you know, PPR style. Right. He's just a quality wide receiver. You have Curtis Samuel leaving. You have the the rapport with Darnold coming in, and you have the fact that last year, I mean, he only had three touchdowns. He was a he was a top twenty four wide receiver with crazy inefficiency when it comes to the amount of yardage. Uh, you know, he had over a thousand yards and only three touchdowns. That's anomalous. So I, I, I don't see any reason with more opportunity for targets, the potential for better quarterback play and being a good wide receiver, um, that he would fall out of that for me. Well, what's funny is I remember doing the wait for when will Robbie Anderson score another touchdown because he scored week one, didn't mm -hmm. score again until week 12. I mean, Robbie Anderson did his best Robert Woods mm -hmm. impression yeah. last year in terms of 95 receptions, just 1,000 yards, three touchdowns. Are you a buy, Mike? Oh man, it it seems like it should be a slam dunk that offensive scheme. Robbie Anderson, theoretically, it, getting even more targets. I'm. Do you like him more than gonna, Cortland Sutton coming back in Denver? Oh, that's a very good question. I think Cortland Sutton is a much better wide receiver. I like. I think Robbie's a fine player, but I think Cortland Sutton is special. But Cortland Sutton has a Drew Locke problem. I'm going to sell the top 24, uh, and I don't know that the touchdowns are anomalous. Jay, I know that, like, you know, the, statistically, yes, his, uh, you know, yards to how many touchdowns on average, but we, when you see that over 53% of his targets were a, a depth of target of short of one to 10 yards, like he was a, he was a slant and drag master. He, he was, he killed people across the middle of the field, but when everything is short, your opportunity to 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 break off a long touchdown, it's just it comes way down. Sure, and I I completely get that, but I'm not talking about him going out and putting up double digit touchdowns. I'm just talking about him going from three to 
six or seven, and, and that's where he's lived most of his career. Is he happy that Sam Darnold's there? I think so, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, it's just strange to see a player completely used a different way and still succeed. I mean, that speaks to Robbie Anderson's ability, I think. He he didn't come in, you know, we thought maybe a deep special, specialist in Carolina came in and became their most go-to receiver. I mean, when they needed a catch. He he has rapport uh, with this staff from college. They work together. And what that staff clearly tried to do this last year is we need to get the ball in Robbie Anderson's hands. Yes. That's why I believe it was short. I don't think it was just Teddy Bridgewater and uh, the scheme fitting. I think they were just manufacturing touches for Robbie Anderson, and, and they could do that in uh, uh, better with ways Sam this Darnold. year. Yeah. All right. Um, I guess I will officially buy. I think it's just inside that area, 20 to 24 range, but I can't see his – I don't see his production as – strange from last year and losing Curtis Samuel. I, I imagine he's in the 90 to 100 reception total range again. All right, that was Buy or Sell from Pristine Auction, pristineauction.com. Great friends of the show. Use the code BALLERS. BALLERS. Get a $10 credit on any of their hundreds of daily sports memorabilia Make sure auctions. that you use the code BALLERS. Don't just, like, you can. Do it. Yeah, you probably should. Yeah. Yep. Part I mean, of the process. $10. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm not going to hit the news drop. I mean, there is one piece of news to discuss. And if I could have, you know, been ill and missed today's show right. to talk about it, that would have been fine. But James Conner did officially sign with the Arizona Cardinals. He did. Whee! <laughs> now, I don't have any music for this one. Mm -mm. I will say this, though. The reaction on social media was intense. They... um they're aware that we're not the, uh, you know, I'm not the biggest James Conner fan. I don't think it's that bad for Arizona as a team. I mean, you needed, you're not going to succeed this year going into it with Chase Edmonds and nobody else. The Cardinals do not have a lot of draft capital to potentially invest on a running back. Right. So James Conner fits the bill of, I mean, I said it on another podcast two weeks ago of a complimentary back to Chase Edmonds. The bill is what is nice about it. He came in at a one and a half million dollars. I think it was one point two five. Yeah, it's it fully wasn't guaranteed. a big contract. So, to which now there is debate. I know even internally in the office as to who is the leader of the timeshare, if there is a timeshare, or who is the starter, if there is a Kenyon Drake role. Is that Chase Edmonds? Is that James Conner? I believe it's going to be James Conner with Chase Edmonds still playing that role, but being far more into a an even timeshare than what we saw with Kenyon Drake. There are a lot of debates on it in terms of what you value at that position. I, I would bet a lot on the fact Chase Edmonds has more snaps than James Conner this year. Mm. So does the snaps matter to you, or do you want to go into the goal line discussion where, like, James Conner's probably going to be in there around the goal line? Opportunities is, is what's going to matter the most to me. Tar yeah. Targets and, and touches. Edmonds I, will catch more passes than James I, Conner I agree. I, I fully agree with that, but that's, I mean, that's what we saw with Edmonds and, and Kenyon Drake. And if you look at the actual – snap share between Kenyon Drake and Chase Edmonds, it's far closer than you realize what happened because Kenyon Drake was close to a workhorse. I mean, he had a ton of opportunity. He would get all the carries, a handful of targets, while Edmonds would see far or would see more. Uh, it, but I think it, after sitting with the signing, uh, I do think Arizona views – we've thought all along that Arizona views – Errors are uh, use Chase Edmonds as a specialist, not as the guy. So I think that James Conner will come in and take over that Kenyon Drake type of a workload. It is going to be very fascinating to watch the the ADP of both of these players because uh, you have to you'll you'll pick a side and yeah. you'll say I think Chase Edmonds. I'm going with it. I'm going with the upside of Chase Edmonds, or you or I'm taking that James Conner is going to take over the Kenyon Drake. Role, which is it's very valuable. If you had not drafted Kenyon Drake in the second round last year, because I think that's where his ADP was, but if if you got that role in the fourth round or the fifth round, you would have been very very happy with that draft day value. Well, you're talking about a great offense. Yes, with opportunity, they're going to score a lot. I don't look at it as a you know. I don't believe teams always function the exact same year to year. You know, they were willing. I believe them when they said they were willing to make Chase, Chase Edmonds their primary runner before they signed James Conner. I believe that players, you know, they get better year over year. You don't just lock a guy into that role. So I think they're willing to give more work to Chase Edmonds. And I think 
it fundamentally comes down to what you believe about James Conner. Is he a great runner? Is he moving the offense? Is Chase Edmonds offering more to the offense? And I think that James Conner, as a reflection of his salary that he got paid, is a question mark for NFL GMs. He got paid very little money. He's an injury-plagued player. He is that, yes. And he saw on the field, he visually took a step back and in the, over the last two years. It's an incredibly small sample size because it is literally one game. Oh, this sounds great. But the one game where Chase Edmonds had the shot, it was against the Miami Dolphins. Chase Edmonds saw 96% of the snaps. And I, if people don't remember what happened, 25 carries – turned into 70 rushing yards. Like, that is incredibly inefficient. That's 2.8 yards per carry. He had a, His longest run of that day was six yards. Now, they fed I'm, – I'm just saying a team will look at that and say, okay, maybe we need somebody else to be in here with it. I mean, we've seen that so many Nobody, times. Andy's brought this up a million times in the past, that these efficient – uh, running backs that can run five, six yards of carry as kind of a backup change of pace guy, they can't always just stay Miami's efficient. Miami's a great defense, get... too. I mean, I, nobody disagrees that they needed a compliment. It's just right. a matter of you're using the language of taking over the Kenyon Drake role. Yes. And that's the difference of opinion. I don't think that he has, I don't think they're bringing him in here to be Kenyon Drake. I think they're bringing him in here to compliment Chase Edmonds. And it will be vastly debated, and both could end up values because it could drive down both ADPs to the point where you're drafting valuable pieces of a good offense later in the draft. And I go back to when they actually traded for Kenyon Drake. Like Chase Edmonds was here, and they said, no, we're going to go get somebody else. And Drake immediately came in and took over where, why would you not give Chase Edmonds a shot? That's two of, years ago. <laughs> I, I know David Johnson was there. There was yeah, an but, injury. But know? David Johnson went down. Yeah. And they said, no, we're going to go get Kenyon Drake. We're going to bring him in. Then we're going to give him $10 million to come back. So I, I really believe that the team views Chase as a specialist. All I heard was James Conner, my guy. Did anybody else hear that? Brooks, heard, did you hear that? I did. Yeah, did I, I hear I did. James Conner, my guy, Mike, Mike Wright, 2021? Yeah. You, no, you that's would, exactly what I heard. You can check the tape of that's happened before. <laughs> uh, it was I think that was 2019. <laughs> When you did make yeah. James Conner my guy. <laughs> Any final thoughts there, Jason? I, uh, I think you... we've exhausted it. I, I I can't wait to find out. All right. Um, I, it will, I will say the the final word on it is my dream of Najee Harris coming to the Arizona Cardinals. It's dead. I, I think yeah. it is dead. <laughs> Kaboom. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mike. Uh, before we move into the interesting running back rankings, want to thank today's sponsor, Raycon. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to an audio program right now. You might have headphones in right now. It might be time to upgrade those headphones, whether you're listening to your favorite news podcast, an audio book, powering through a workout with a pumped up playlist. A pair of Raycons in your ears can make all the difference. I have a pair of Raycons. I enjoy them thoroughly. And look, look they're Bluetooth. They're wireless. There are people out there that are still holding on to their wired headphones. I get it. You're, you're like, this has worked forever. Moving to a pair of wireless in-ear buds will... I am not joking when I say change, it, it will change... But I like my VCR. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I am serious. It will change your life moving to uh, a, a pair of Bluetooth headphones. And these have six hours of playtime, unplug, and the best part, Raycon makes great sound accessible to everyone with wireless earbuds starting at half the price of other premium audio brands. And check this out. Raycon is offering 15% off all their products for our listeners. And here's what you got to do to get it. Go to buyraycon.com slash footballers. That's it. You'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order. So feel free to grab a pair and a spare. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash footballers. Buyraycon.com slash footballers. And Foot Clan, let's uh, keep it real for a second. Keeps it real. More than 50 million men in the U.S. suffer from male pattern baldness. Pattern I hate baldness. to break it to you, but your favorite footballer probably suffers from male pattern My baldness. My hair's fine. <laughs> exactly what I said, Andy. Jason's um, isn't. That's right. That's right. But I'm here to offer you, uh, you know, a, a, a solution. Keeps offers a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair 
There are two FDA-approved medications that can help prevent hair loss, and Keeps has both of them. It's convenient. Doctor consultants online, delivery straight to your door, a low-cost treatments is, uh, you know, start at just ten dollars a month, and they offer generic versions. There's discreet packaging. You don't gotta feel bad about this. Don't feel bad. <laughs> don't feel bad. <laughs> Bunch of great hair. Five star reviews, uh, more than any of its competitors. If you're ready to take action, prevent your hair loss, go to keeps.com slash footballers and receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps.com slash footballers to get your first month free. K E E P S dot com slash footballers. All right, it's running back time. Running backs. Early running back rankings. Going 11 through 20-something today. If you missed the 1 through 10 show, you can still listen. It's available. These don't expire like Mission Impossible tapes. Like, they, Ooh, you know what I mean? They, that'd be sweet. Oh, we should start pulling them, pulling them down. Oh, yeah. We can NFT these oh, shows. I, were, I thought we were you blowing, only up get a few? <laughs> blowing up their iPhone. I don't know if we can do that. I don't know if the tech is out there for that. Um, but 1 through 10, I'm going to run through them real fast. From Tuesday's show, McCaffrey, Cook, Kamara, Henry, Barkley, Jones, Zeke, Chubb, Taylor, Akers. Ooh, Akers, making the yes. top 10. I am with you there. And you and you weren't on the first show. Did you have any like a, a quick take on one or two of these guys where you felt like their consensus was way out of whack? You guys were differing on your Chubb versus Taylor. Uh, well, just Nick Chubb overall. Jason had him way too low. Right. Where Where do you have him, Jason? Uh, Wait, I, it was a, I thought it was 11. I, I have Nick Chubb at, okay. at 11 right now. He's, I was trying to figure out who was on what side of that. Right. Yeah. Right side. Wrong, wrong side. side. Okay. <laughs> right side. <laughs> wrong side. All right. We'll go to number 11 here. Always an interesting name to discuss and debate on the show. Austin Eckler comes in at 11. Wait a minute. Jason is the oh, highest. Yeah. Jason is the highest on Austin Eckler? You're darn right I am, man. Guess who his quarterback isn't? It's not Tyrod Taylor. This isn't going into last year worrying wow. about him being able to receive the ball. Austin Eckler was throwing the ball a kajillion times sure. for Justin Herbert. I think in that once he got back from injury, he was on pace for 140-something targets, 98 receptions. So, yeah, I'm all in on Austin Eckler. I love it. Good friend of the show. Jason's also making sure to give him the dap. Um, I have him at 13, Mike at 11, Jason at eight, ends up at 11 on our consensus, uh, played 10 games, had 18 opportunities per game last year, change a quarterback, never been a really big touchdown guy. That's not his secret sauce. Uh, he doesn't uh, have as many opportunities, you know, when, even when he was a compliment to Melvin Gordon, you looked at Austin Eckler and you said, this is a running back that makes his hay in the receiving game. Mm -hmm. The numbers were so insane two years ago that there was a great call for you know, just a return to an average amount and then Tyrod and, and Herbert and injuries, significant injuries, for Eckler really threw off the you know, the season for him. I think right on the running back one cusp is where he belongs. I mean I sure I, you know, you do have <clears throat> to talk about variables in play, you do have a new head coach. And you don't sure. have Anthony Lynn uh, there anymore. Um, new offensive coordinator as well. So there are going to be philosophical differences in the way they run this offense combined with very limited sample size with Justin Herbert. So I think that, yeah, I, I'm kind of, I believe in the talent and ability of Austin Eckler. And I don't know exactly how that's going to shake out. C completely agree. The, you've got to be uh, your your eyes have to be open to the to the variables and the changes. We'll we'll see what they do in the draft if if they surprise us with running back. I don't expect them to. And if they don't, he is so far and away the most talented running back on the roster. There are things I don't like and things I love about the Chargers as a whole and for fantasy. I think their team is going to be outstanding this year. I really like the direction of their offense. Their defense should be healthy and improved. And what they've done for the offensive line is fantastic. A lot of these things actually are negatives. When I look at Justin Herbert taking that crazy step forward for fantasy because he's he might not have to score 55 points to win a game. But that's good. Thank you. But that's good news for the running game. If they're up, uh, you know, uh, you know, you talk about he's never really been a touchdown guy. Um, he had Melvin Gordon, and then you know they they you know had some struggles this last year. But I I think that the defense being good, 
the offensive line being improved, the proof that they'll dump the ball off to him with this quarterback, I'm in. I am more concerned about the Chargers as a whole. I think there will be a level mm -hmm. of prolific mediocrity with this team. I don't think that they can overcome Kansas City. I don't think that they can uh, – you know, Denver's defense is outstanding. They're going to play them twice this year. Uh, I unfortunately believe that middle-of-the-road Las Vegas will continue to compete in games and improve. So um, that is my only real concern there is just I think they may end up in a similar record situation. Yeah, if if you take a look at last year's the game log, because you you kind of have to put the pieces of the puzzle together for Eckler's season because of the injury, but there was two games where he had a single target, and that's you know that can mess up an entire average. One was Week One with Taylor as the quarterback, and that's when we all we that's all when I took my victory lap. Yes, you took your victory lap. Uh, I, I as a supporter of Austin Eckler last year was really really freaked out. But then week two, the unfortunate uh, uh, shot injury to Taylor turned into Herbert starting for the rest of the year. And the other game where, where Eckler had a single target, it's because he got knocked out at the very beginning of the game in uh, week four against Tampa Bay. But other than that, I mean, his utilization in the passing game was absolutely outstanding. So if we could just get those... Let's get let's get Eckler just a couple of rushing touchdowns. Wasn't there? Over here. Haven't you spoken a lot, Jason, about believing that the the Chargers' defense will vastly improve and change some of the pace of play stuff? Yes, I do think that, and that's where I'm I'm a little bit down on the passing on the game, Herbert side on the on the Herbert side from the, the the step forward upside, but I I don't think that will affect the the running game that much with the improved offensive line. All right, um, let's put a couple of running backs together here cool. with similar stories uh 12 and 13 12 is antonio gibson 13 is jk dobbins uh we all agree we all have gibson at 12 so consensus 12 makes sense and then uh on dobbins you guys both have him at 13 i got him at 16 i'm a little less bullish as sure. of right now so gibson is a player where i think the the layup easy argument against antonio gibson oh it's easy it's the touchdown. Yes. Um, disproportionate level of touchdowns. 11 yes. touchdowns on 170 carries. I am more excited about Gibson because of what he did last year on the limited amount of work where I'm not too concerned about it. I think he gets more opportunities this year. I think it's a great team. And uh, I think when you, when you look at how running backs are utilized year two under a kind of a veteran head coach, who needs to have some trust built. I think that's part of the J.D. McKistick experiment. And part of what he did as a head coach was, look, I'm not going to put this rookie in the position to be my third down back and pass protect. I'm not going to put him in the position right. to be who we're fully dependent on on every snap. But you earn that trust, camp, year two, Antonio Gibson with the limited amount of work even in college. This is a an opportunity to get to 220-230 carry-wise. And yeah, maybe the touchdowns are seven, nine, whatever. You're going to be happy. He's going to be so freaking good. I mean, <laughs> yes. he's going to be so yes. unbelievably good for fantasy. I, I, I've got him at twelve, but he could. He's a guy that, in my view, could finish as a top five guy. He is so talented. It reminds me so much of when we were singing the name of David Johnson. Comes right. out. He had limited opportunities of, as a rookie, but was still outstanding. I think he finished in the top ten because he had yeah, crazy DJ? touchdowns. Yes. Yeah, David Johnson did. Very similar to Antonio Gibson, and and there were well, you know, the touchdown rate will come down for David Johnson and. Maybe the touchdown rate comes down from Gibson, but I expect him to be the guy. I mean, McKissick was out there in large part because of a combination of the fact that Antonio Gibson was a rookie. Andy, you just eloquently stated, like, not putting him in those positions mixed with Alex. It was eloquent, wasn't it? It was so eloquent. But mixed with <laughs> Alex Smith, who all he does is just like, mm -hmm. check down, check down, check down. Like, that's not happening for McKissick this year with Fitzmagic there. I think that the offense is so much improved with Ryan Fitzpatrick and the addition of Curtis Samuel that Antonio Gibson is going to be awesome. The the the, the, the truly sad part of last year was Antonio Gibson was just starting to like really really cook for the uh, coming into the the fantasy playoffs before the unfortunate turf toe injury against the Pittsburgh Steelers and that was like we didn't get to see it where 
Gibson had just spent five weeks straight beating the crap out of given uh, bad defenses. You know, I I knocked not knocked, but you you got to highlight David Montgomery's end of season because he was matched up perfectly with this uh, with multiple games in a row against poor rushing defenses. Gibson had that too, you know, with multiple games against Dallas, the Giants, and then the real test was going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers and unfortunately got hurt right at the beginning of the game. But I'm with Jason that Gibson is is so interesting where the argument the, the, the argument in the draft coming out of the draft was did Washington just draft a wide receiver? Did they draft a running back? No, we're he's running back. Okay, well, Gibson has never seen X amount of carries. He immediately comes in his rookie year and sees 170 carries in in 14 games. He the ceiling for Gibson is is a top five player. If they truly unlock his his skill set in the passing game, I don't know if that skill set will be fully unleashed with because McKissick is still there for another year. But Gibson's future man, is just – it is very, very bright. I expect there to be plenty of eye-roll moments this year with McKissick on the field when you hope that Gibson – Certainly. And, and those will still exist. Now, moving on to Dobbins. Um, J.K. Dobbins uh, is a very, very talented player that is going to I'm, – I'm afraid this is like the rhetoric that will continue with Baltimore for years to come. There is a pie problem for J.K. Dobbins, mm -hmm. potentially. He is a dynamic, explosive player. Lamar is just a pie, a pie eater. He's a pie destroyer, <laughs> and here and he is the part of the problem here. Part of what's wrong with loving J.K. Dobbins for me and why I'm a little bit lower is simply because he might do something great on his 12 opportunities or his 13 opportunities, but he might not. And when you have lower opportunities than other running backs in the same range, you may be disappointed. Their running back one is Lamar Jackson. The running back two is probably. J.K. Dobbins, but they like Gus Edwards. They're willing to give him the rock. And so when you talk about... This reminds me of Cam Newton with like Jonathan Stewart and D'Angelo Williams. So you got sure. potential goal line issues from just variability, right? Like, is Lamar going to run it in? Is it going to be, you know, how big is that goal line pie going to be? And then two hyper-talented players like Jay Stu and D-Will were, where it's like, oh man, did I pick the right game? So that would be my concerns that put him slightly outside the RB1 category for me. But he's a he's a great player. He has he certainly has more worries uh than some of the other guys we've talked about, but I loved his college tape and then when we saw him take the job over from Mark Ingram, he was just great. He was absolutely fantastic mm -hmm. for fantasy. Uh didn't have any bad weeks pretty much, you know, once he came back from the injury game in Pittsburgh and was outstanding. You you look at the Baltimore Ravens, you say okay, the passing game is not great for fantasy, but their offense is great for fantasy, and that's because of the running game. You go back two years, Mark Ingram was the running back eight. And so now, you know, there is a top 10 running back fantasy option on this team. Um, it, it, the offense is capable of producing that. J.K. Dobbins is talented enough. So I like J.K. Dobbins here, but I, I do concede that he's not going to catch a ton of balls, which stinks. And then if the touchdown regression happens, which – it probably should will, yeah. a little bit. Um, you know, well, he could fall out of the top fifteen. It it will definitely happen because he was scoring a rushing touchdown on every eleven carries, which that's not sustainable. No, that is that is certainly Although, didn't Ingram do something very similar yes, the year before? Yeah, yeah. It, I'm I'm in on Dobbins. I think he is going to be solid. That and you'll you will get vultured by Lamar Jackson at the goal line several times throughout the season, but that's just part of the ride that you're signing up for. Or vultured from the 50-yard line. Yeah, or that too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the uh, Dobbins, what he showed as a college player, it immediately showed up as a pro. 9% of his rushing attempts were for big gains. So 9% of his rushes were 15 or more yards on the ground. He has home run hitting ability, which I mean, even the, the couple years ago, when Mark Ingram was solid for fantasy because he was scoring a bunch of touchdowns, Ingram didn't – his home run years were long yeah. gone. But Dobbins is young, and he is – Dobbins has juice. I would be afraid to have him as my one. I agree with that. I don't want him as my running back one. I'm curious where he will end up going around draft time. Like when you look at him and Cam Akers, what – because they're three away in these, these early rankings. Right. Like what, sep what separates them? I think the hope 
of a passing game for Acres puts him ahead of the pack. Like that 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 is ahead of I these think, two. I think both go in the second. Okay. All right, let's look at uh, the next couple names on the list here. Uh, Joe Mixon Whew. and Clyde edwards Yay. Uh Joe Mixon, I'm the highest, I guess, by a lot. Um, last year, averaged 24 opportunities a game, only played six games, 20 opportunities a game the year before. Uh, I like where Cincinnati's going. Uh, no Gio Bernard, Joe Burrow's second year. Joe Mixon's still young, and it's his, it's his opportunity to, in this offense, uh, over the last 16 games played for Mixon, he's got 1,300 rushing yards, eight rushing touchdowns, 42 receptions. Those numbers are great. Can he stay healthy? Well, I'm going to presume health for Joe Mixon. I don't think he's in the category of eternally uh, in need of repair yet. So uh, people want to talk about the offensive line. It's a huge problem, but it, it could be three-fifths different this year. I mean, Jonah Williams, their top pick is coming back. They signed Riley Reef, and they could spin the fifth pick on Sewell, mm -hmm. and those three things could make a humongous difference yes. in this offense, its ability to move the football. So I'm, I'm still a believer that Joe Mixon is a top twelve uh, talent fantasy wise. Yeah, I, I don't blame you. There are numbers that would support a pro Joe Mixon fantasy finish, and there are numbers that would support you know a, a letting him pass at totally. his ADP and take someone a little bit later. When you talk about opportunities. He, you know, his numbers, which, you know, we used 2019 because he was injured in 2020, he would have had the fourth most, uh, you know, touches, opportunities um, in the league on a per game basis. And actually, if you look at the value of passing over that, it was top three. So when you're getting the ball that much, you're going to be great for fantasy. But, but Mike and I have a little game. <laughs> I want to play a game. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. This game, it's a fun one. Yeah. Mike, well, this is going to be a nightmare because <laughs> the amount of games Joe Mixon has missed in the last couple of years, there's going to be names that come across. Is Joe Mixon or, like, Jerry Seinfeld? I mean, I don't even know what this is going to be. This game is Jerry called Jerry Seinfeld, much funnier. Yes, yes, that's true. Joe Mixon or Chris Carson. Now, here's the thing. You're, you're right. Joe Mixon's yeah, this missed is a the bunch setup. of games. This is the setup. But Chris Carson has what? two. No, no, no. How dare you? This setup is actually in your favor. Since 2017, they've both had four seasons. Uh, Joe Mixon has five more games played than Chris Carson. Great. 50 to 45. So, yeah. who has 50 games. Who has more top 24 weeks? Joe Mixon or Chris Carson with five extra games to mix? <laughs> Chris Carson. That is correct. That is, yeah, wait, I mean, oh, I mean, thank you, Mike. Yeah. One for one. Okay. <sighs> Top 20 games. Uh, so we're just going to take, we're going to keep walking this well, down, well, walking this down the ship. How about this? Top 15. Top 15 games more for Joe Mixon or Chris Carson? Top 15. But you're going to, I mean, this is all Chris Carson, I'm, I'm Top sure. Top 12. Yep, it's Chris Carson. <laughs> Top 10. Oh, they're tied. You guys like Chris Carson? I do like Love. Chris oh, okay. Carson. I, I think Love he's going to be a good value yeah. in this year's draft. So um, I, I didn't even know we were going to fully make that into a game but um well the, the oh, game, did you just invent that just now uh yeah the play okay. games first time the, the the game had to show up because you have joe mixon at 10 while you have chris carson at 22 yeah that's yeah. disgusting okay i accept that do you Wait, are, let me ask the computer yes says disgusting? you are think you yes, are disgusting, disgusting. <laughs> well, thank you there's a long way to go between now and then I don't really have any. I don't have any guilt defending Joe Mixon as a top twelve guy. Um, when I'm looking for opportunity at running back, and this is just the way I play fantasy, I look for opportunity on these on a player with a high amount of the team's rushing share, passing, pass receiving work mm -hmm. on a team that can can make the jump and become better. That's what I saw in Dalvin Cook when he succeeded. That's what I saw in Todd Gurley when he succeeded. It's not to say that I'm calling that for Mixon, but I want the potential of that happening on a, for a player. Do you like Joe Burrow? I do like Joe Burrow. Draft capital this year? Do you? I I just think that there's an opportunity. All all, all funny games aside. But thank you for roasting um, me. You're welcome. It's kind of what we do here. <laughs> um, all funny games aside, I w I would say that uh, Joe Mixon projects to have the ability to have a real breakout year <laughs> projects to have the ability yes. to have i mean the, he's he's just he's maddening 
He is, he he is. is maddening that we can't. If you give if you give Joe Mixon sixteen games this year, he's going to be great. Which one thing you did miss on last uh, the last episode is the reality that no running backs yeah. play sixteen games. If you well, give, that, that's true. Uh, and but what, Joe Mixon, his last three games before injury last year, he was the number one, number twenty three, number eight yes. on that team. Yeah, and Giovanni Bernard, with him gone, I mean, that's not like Gio was out there doing a whole bunch. But I mean that that that's a that is a positive check mark in Joe Mixon, especially in the passing game. Maybe you see a one or two more targets per game. That's a big deal for Joe Mixon over the course of the season. Last year's pace. I mean, just last year's six game, his pace was 1,100 yards and eight touchdowns. Yeah. With 56 I, receptions. I will be honest. Oh, yeah, that'd be nice. You know, I'm, I, I've am i got him at 17. Andy's got him at 10. If I had to I had to break the tie one direction, I, I like him being more towards a top 12 guy than where I've got him. All right, Clyde edwards alaire at 15. I... Have I, I really don't have any idea how to think about Clyde edwards alaire I really, really right. don't. I do feel like this year is going to tell you the rest of the story. This year is going to define the dynasty value of Clyde edwards alaire forever. Because if, if last year ends up being this perceptual disappointment, not taking over, 181 carries is certainly not taking over. In, I mean, 12 games. Correct. Certainly not the level of uh, workhorse of, of a 300 carry 250 carry guy. No, it, but I, I'm just saying if this year doesn't work out the way that people hope for Clyde, Edwards, I think that ship has sailed for his time in Kansas city. I don't think you get a year three breakout for Clyde. Edwards, no, I agree with you. And I, I think what we saw last year is going to be pretty much what we see this next year. However, um, because it ended so poorly with a bad game in Tampa, then an injury, then it was back for two, injured and out. Uh, it it really left us just completely destroyed by Clyde Edwards-Alaire on the season. He's going to be a top 15 back because he will get enough work in a great offense. And if the touchdowns happen to come, very similar to the Robbie Anderson, you know, he only had four touchdowns on the course of the season rushing. I, I expect that number to go up. I, I he What happens if they do sign a, another passing down oriented back because there were rumors about James White. They made an offer to James White. White ended up re-signing with New England. But what if they do that in the draft? Are you you know, do you are you concerned about Clyde's workload with how they use three backs? It, it will take away the ability, I think, for him to be a, a an upper echelon top, you know, eight type of back if they were to go and spend capital on a pass catcher. How high can Clyde finish this year, Mike? How high? Yes. Top five. So you still believe that? I firmly it, believe that okay. because because of the offense and bad bad touchdown totals that were kind of yeah, outlier esque compared to opportunity. Yeah, we we mentioned J.K. Dobbins with the rushing touchdown of every eleven carries. Clyde was a touchdown every forty five carries. Like that's silly. That's still especially like when they gave Clyde the ball in the rushing game, he wasn't bad. He was in fact very good and very efficient before the. Uh, the injury at the end of the year knocked him out. He was on a pace of 292 opportunities. Like he was getting the ball uh, a ton. You just had some really unfortunate. You had some really unfortunate touchdown luck mixed in with two catastrophically bad games. And I think that kind of tainted and, and painted this picture of Clyde. That and the he's, injury. Yeah. So the, he was uh, things. I think just bounced the wrong way. Personally, I I still believe in Clyde Edwards-Alaire, the player, and I believe in him as a fantasy player too. Okay, sixteen, James Robinson of Jacksonville. Oof. He's only sitting at sixteen because Jason's got him down at twenty-one. I've got him at fourteen. Mike at seventeen. He still feels impossible to I, rank. He is the hardest. I said it right before the show. He's out of everybody I've ranked right now. We're not statting players out yet until after the draft. We're just ordering the guys yep. with, to our belief. Man, I just kept putting another person ahead of him, another person ahead of him, and I hate it. The NFL I, did that too. I told you guys before the show, I am very bullish on James Robinson, and the more I look into this, the more I think he is my – like if you said, hey, pick somebody that's consensus outside the top 15 that can be a top five running back, I think it's James Robinson. And uh, when you look at what he did last year, 240 carries, 1,000 yards, seven touchdowns, 60 targets, 40, 49 receptions, everyone's going to point to the, the workload, you know, getting everything in this offense. Um, 
There's, I'm gonna. <laughs> you're saying the the number seven overall running back who missed two games. Right. Right. Who <laughs> missed? And then we're all like, yeah, maybe he's in the top twenty. I don't know. He was the top. I don't know. I need to see a little bit more. He was an RB seven on a team. Listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> Jacksonville was 30th in points per game, 29th in yards per game, 32nd in total rush attempts. Did you hear that? 32nd <laughs> in rush attempts, 31st in time of possession, 28th in points per drive, 31st in score margin. That's as bad as you can get in football. He finished RB7. I Carlos Hyde is on the back end of his career. Say what you will about him still being an effective runner. He's on the backside of his career. Agreed. Multiple teams over the last few years. When Urban Meyer arrived in Jacksonville, he said he's going to build the running back room around James Robinson. He is a, a coach that's going to run a shotgun offense. Who's the best runner in all of football in a shotgun offense? It's James Robinson. He averaged like 6.3 per carry in the shotgun last year. I just think that we're going to look at it and we're going to say, it didn't make sense last year, Correct. so it can't make sense in the future. And that is where it's like, look, I'm not, I have him early rankings at 14. That's not seven, so I'm not sitting there drinking Kool-Aid. I just think he might be the widest range of outcomes of all these guys, which is lending itself to what Jason said. He's very hard to rank. Yeah, and, and before I get into the, the possible negatives, the one thing that I want to add to uh, you know the analysis of James Robinson is if, if you didn't get the opportunity, because um, Jags, to watch James Robinson last year, Every time he touched, he was so good film-wise. You're just watching this guy who just bounces off of guys, never goes down to that first tackle. It's like defenders can't see him behind the line. Just outstanding on tape. So this is really like, I am so full of disrespect right now, and I mean none. <laughs> I mean none of it, uh, Mr. Robinson. I, I owe you an apology because it's disrespectful. You owe you've, cuckoo, could you, you. You've done everything. But it... It's tough because when you are an undrafted free agent, I mean, Phil Lindsay, yes. right? A couple of years ago, finished in 15 games. He was a running back one in fantasy, but they were not really invested in him. He looked great on film. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, the next year, you know, he gets a little bit less work. He's the running back 19. And then they're like, hey, Melvin Gordon, why don't you come? Philip, you're off the team. Yeah. Well, it's always going to be a lot harder with the the lower draft capital, lower investment type of players, even if it's an Arian Foster when he was breaking out, even if it's a, uh, you know, there's a number of these guys that were Raheem Moser, right? It's like, oh man, are you, are you in on him? Are we really going to believe? And that's, that's going to be a challenge and that might make him a value, but it, it's going to be a hard mental hurdle. Daryl Bevel's there now too, by the way. And he, they, he just, he has to make it through the draft. That's mm -hmm. where yes, that, yes. my my ranking of 17 for James Robinson. I'm in a holding pattern. I am just circling around the airport yes. waiting to see if they spend a a day one or not day one, a, a day two pick on a running back. Cuz you can sense. you can say oh, we're building around James Robinson and then until and then all of a sudden Travis Etienne is there and you weren't expecting it and you were in love with him. Oh my gosh. You Walt, could say Keyshawn Vaughn is yeah. going to break out this year. <laughs> yeah. And then Giovanni Bernard becomes available. I mean, when you have a chance to sign an older Giovanni Bernard, Mike, you got to take, take it. it. You guys just put the fear of God in me. <laughs> I mean, you're, no team has more draft capital than that, Jacksonville. Exactly. They could just – they might run out of people to draft. I mean, they might literally get to the point where we got like, Najee and uh, we uh, – What do I do? We'll also take ETN. I mean, they have more draft capital than anybody. Um and uh, this player is – this next player on our list is on a team with the least draft capital of anybody, and that is Chris Carson at 17. And he's got a big bag of money. Yeah, I my ranking sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Wait, let us check. Yes. Yeah, my ranking of Chris Carson <laughs> sucks here. You guys both have him at 15. I've pulled him down to 17 on our consensus with my 22. But it's this is a perfect thing, I think, for, for us to highlight on the show because I believe it's going to happen. This is what people are going to do to Chris Carson. You're going to forget how great Chris Carson was last year because it was only 12 games. The stat line is not what you had hoped for this past year. You're gonna he will be overlooked at the running back position. People will be taking, you know, like oh, I see. You like got to put him in order, right? I mean, Jason just said this about James Robinson. He kept putting other guys ahead of him. That's what happened with yes. me and Chris Carson. He just kept picking exactly. other players that. Mm -hmm. And and uh, ironically, talking about James Robinson, Carlos Hyde switching teams right. matters. I mean, uh, Rashad Penny should be healthy, so uh, it's not going to be you know an entire. Uh, now it's only Chris Carson. Um, 
But uh, Carlos Hyde was successful last year as a runner in that offense and did vulture some opportunity away with him out of the way. I think that's just good news for Chris Carson, who finally got, you know, he got paid. Um, so that's, I mean, yes. that's money he's never had because he was a late round guy. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's one of the reasons he got the doubts early on, just the same way James Robinson might. Exactly. Um, 16 opportunities a game last year in 12 games, down from 22 the year before. I know you guys are Rashad Penny truthers, um, but you you put that evil on Jason. Yeah, please. I was gonna say that's that's <laughs> that's I'll, I'll take it. That's <laughs> yeah. mine. It's mine to own. Yep. Uh, yeah. After all right. All, I still why shouldn't I? They did grab uh, former Raiders offensive guard Gabe Jackson this offseason. Could improve that offensive line as well. Um, <laughs> we have an other stats and storylines in our show doc for Car Chris Carson. It just says, why does Andy show such blatant disrespect for this man? He was on his way, man. Running back, this is how the season started. 7, 13, 26, 4, 11, injury. Like, Chris Carson was on his way. Well, the Seahawks. To, first five game pace. Just dominating. It was a lot of touchdowns and, and pass catching. Do you know what his pace was in receptions? I do not. Let's you want to have your mind well, blown? Well, look, Pete Carroll has said that Chris Carson has some of the best hands on the team. He was all, So first five games played, his attempts, pace, 195. Ooh, wow. That's because of all the cooking. You, his touchdowns, 9.6 on the ground. So okay. that number's nice. Better, better. His reception pace was 67. I'll that, take that. Yes. Now the Seahawks on seventy three targets. So best hands might add up on that <laughs> on that number. The Seahawks obviously are wanting to get back to the running game, and so you know you, you talked about he was down to sixteen opportunities a game from twenty two opportunities the year prior. Uh, they probably meet in the middle there this this coming season. Might get twenty twenty opportunities a game. Um, yeah, it could. Uh, over the last six, when he did return from injury, he was averaging sixteen per game, but up at forty receptions. So, uh, yes, possible great value. 18, Miles Sanders. 19, David Montgomery. 20, DeAndre Swift. Miles Sanders, Mike, if you could make a sound to represent your feelings on Miles Sanders, what <clears throat> sound is it? <clears throat> okay. Oh, it's curmudgeon old man. I've heard that before. Yeah, that's a bitter beer you, face you're if looking, I've ever uh, seen it. You're looking at Miles Sanders in your lawn from your porch. <laughs> and I need, he needs to get off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, he made two good plays last year. And I and they were both against me. And I enjoyed both of them. I did not enjoy the many bad ones, though. I like their offensive line getting healthy. I like the pieces they have there. Miles Sanders is their guy. Uh, Eighteen opportunities a game. A little bit of an opened up offense if Jalen Hurts is running around and in extending plays, and Miles Sanders can catch the football. So I am at fifteen. I'm the most generous here. Mike at nineteen. Jason at twenty. Uh, uh, ironically, I don't hate Miles Sanders, even though I'm the lowest. And Mike, you pretty much despise him with all of your being right now. <laughs> well, um, just a mm, right. But, I'm, just, I'm just thoroughly upset. Right. I, I didn't. I didn't feel the burns the same way that you did. But um, I, I see the opportunity for Miles to be good. I think that the uh, chance of him being that 325 opportunity uh, workhorse back they they proved to themselves last year that. It can't. It, it, it's a bad idea. They wanted to do it. It just couldn't happen. And well, so they, they got Jordan Howard back. Jordan Howard, exactly. Yeah, I mean, if this team is as bad as I think they'll be, there could be a lot of uh, free points for Miles Sanders towards the Whew. end of these games. Point. But yeah, <laughs> point. <laughs> uh, David Montgomery gets the ultimate bag of disrespect from the three of us. Yeah, yeah. sorry. He finishes the RB four, and he's at nineteen. Sorry, Monty. I don't think that that's fair. It is not fair of him to do to us what he did last year in fantasy football, <laughs> well, which be, was be excellent at be the end. Excellent when he was the only uh, one in the backfield against terrible teams. I mean, the reality was he was great. He was phenomenal. And I want to be clear: before he tore his ACL, Tariq Cohen was awful. <laughs> He's an awful running back. He's been awful for a while. Yes. He burned very bright. But before yeah. he tore his ACL in those games that he was playing, here's David Montgomery's fantasy finish, 37, 7, 39, and 30. And he still finished as the RB4. Right, Incredible. Because, yes. So. Incre that sounds like RB1 numbers the rest of the way. And to point out that David Montgomery is actually a – he could be an okay player. Like Coming out of college, he broke elusive metrics. You're like that – 
part of why we were so into David Montgomery. We were very excited. Matt Nagy took him with, with decent draft capital. Last year, David Montgomery forced 72 missed tackles. David Montgomery is... And, and for context, uh, Miles Sanders was at 34. I mean, you can't... There have been many a backup running back injured, and the guy in front of him does not run off 7, 1, Agreed. 7, 1, 9, 6. Agreed. To finish the season. I think he was the only back to finish in the top 10 that many weeks in a row in the entire year of anybody. So deserves probably, you know, there's a number of these guys. I think that's what we're learning on today's show. There's a handful of players where it's a, what do you believe test? David Montgomery, James Robinson, Joe Mixon, and Josh Jacobs, who's not in this list, but he's going to be another guy. It's like, what do you really believe about their seasons? You don't, this is the NFL and at running back, you don't even get that many seasons for these guys. It's not right. like we can sit here and go, I need to see three bona fide seasons from a running back before I can believe in them. Otherwise, you're just going to be caught with your pants down in fantasy. And speaking of a running back choosing, do you believe him in him or not? At 20 to finish out this list is DeAndre Swift. I have him the highest at 16. Jason has him at 22. Andy at 19. And DeAndre Swift is incredibly tough. The addition of Jamal Williams, I think, it hurts him in terms of workload. DeAndre Swift, though, is he is it is a bet on talent, and DeAndre Swift is an excellent running back. So I th I think we may be underrating uh, the talent of what he'll be able to get done, because even if the offense is bad, I mean, DeAndre Swift should still be the guy. He he showed excellent pass catching chops. Jason, why are you so out on DeAndre Swift? Uh, similar reasons to what we saw last year with Miles Sanders. If the team is bad, um, it's it's hard to be good outside of special talent breaking a few plays. And and DeAndre Swift will. Like he James will have, Robinson. He will have a couple of great um, plays. He's extremely talented. But the fact that you brought in another pass catcher, you took away the quarterback that I'm more confident in the pass throwing to the running back, uh, you know, it – that's where he needs to make his hay for fantasy. He needs to catch the ball a lot in this offense. He very, very well could. I mean, because... Running back 18 while missing three games last year. There ain't nobody out there. I mean, to think... Is Matthew Stafford still there? No. Nope. Matthew Stafford is no. not still there. Um, you know, you do lose Galladay. You, lo you lose Marvin Jones. So maybe a ton of targets are going to go his way. Uh, if, you know, if DeAndre Swift was a top 12 running back next year, I'm not going to be shocked. I'm just not going to project that because he's on the Lions and there's reasons with, with Jared Goff and Jamal Williams to believe he's going to get uh, a smaller target share. I think it sums up my slight reservations on DeAndre Swift. I'd rather have David Montgomery. Oof. I would as well. I've uh, got David Montgomery at 16. Which still feels a little low. I would rather. I think I still like David Montgomery more than Chris Carson, even though I said my Carson ranking sucks. I mean, it, if if you have shown me that you can put up number one overall multiple times, top ten performances, Carson has not really lived in that realm very often. Carson hasn't. I mean, I, as someone who's had Chris Carson on my fantasy team many, many times, he doesn't really live in the top five world. I I, I agree with you. He. You know, he was just, the RB eleven two years ago and the RB fifteen three years ago. Right, but talking uh, about Carson, yes, yeah, that makes the, perfect sense. Along the way, he's usually, you know, running back twenty or fifteen or ten. You know, just right. whatever's above Joe Mixon. <laughs> that's that's probably true. I you you have you have backed me into a situation where if I somehow admit Chris Carson's good, that is like Mixon has to be. That's right. It's yeah, a no weird. win situation. It's, it's fantasy algebra. That's fine. If Carson's <laughs> better than Mixon, that's fine. It doesn't hurt me. <laughs> All right. Um, what are we going to do? You I do don't know. What are we doing? You want to do some mailbag? Sure. Let's do it. Mailbag. Bang -o, bang -o. Carson. What, are you, what are you laughing at over there, Al? <laughs> I guess I just got a kick out of your confusion over there. Maybe I, maybe I was on the hunt for a button. You know? <laughs> button, button. Yeah, I might have seen got that. The button? You might have noticed that, but yeah. you didn't want to call me out? Yep. Okay. You, and you didn't want to hit the button? Uh, he could have hit it for me. He just laughed at me instead. That's okay. <laughs> oh, all right. Mailbag. Mailbag. Part two. All right. Question from... No more questions. <laughs> <laughs> 
question from Ben in New Zealand. Oh, but sure. Oh, hey, but we're sure. turning our redraft league into a keeper league this year. Any advice on how this changes draft strategy? Yes. Do you take more rookies and second-year players hoping that they break out? Uh, here is the truth. There is a – you are going to want to change to – uh, the younger, the the youth. When, now you're keeper, and these things will matter. Don't do that thing. Do, that's the advice. Is don't. To be clear, change. you're saying you're going to want to become youth oriented, and don't do that thing. That's right. You you want to be like, that but this guy's you younger. Don't do. don't do that thing. Um, the only place where it, <laughs> that thing you don't do. Yeah, that's do a, that, this, <laughs> that was a sequel. Um. The only the only place that I would say that it does come into effect is depending on your keeper rules. If it is a value of where they were drafted, then the later round guys, when I'm at you know rounds 13, 14, 15, I'm going to take the high swing for the fence. I'm probably more rookies than I usually would. Rookie wide receivers, which I don't usually love drafting. I'd be more willing there for the shot at the Odell Beckham or Justin Jefferson year two keep the at a super cheap price. All right, Instagram question. From Justin McCullough, James Robinson, or the 105 rookie pick? Oh, whoa, oh what a good goodness. question. You know, I don't think that I have the guts to say James Robinson here. Okay, you're going to take the 105? I think I am. So and that, that's just playing the playing the draft capital odds. I mean, it, it's really, really tough. Okay, but let's say that this can be revisited post-NFL draft. And um, it sits and, the same as and it is? And the, and the backfield sits the same. Ugh! If if they don't draft uh, a running back on day two or even you know in the fourth round, if they get a sixth, seventh round or whatever, uh, I think I would take him over the one hundred and five. Well, let me ask you a different question. If 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 Travis Etienne or or Najee Harris are out there, are you taking James Robinson or those two? Those two, okay. Well, Najee for sure. Yeah, Najee, I would take. It's interesting. For sure. I mean that's that that's the it's like we've I mean, seen nothing from those we've guys. We've seen nothing from them. And Who do you we've want, seen... James Robinson or Clyde edwards helaire Oh man, Clyde, I'll take the offense. I yeah. mean this this is the the hard part. You just can't bank everything on one season. And if you're if you're going to take both the running backs, you tell me you're not taking Devonta Smith. That's, and it's yeah, that's Jamar Chase and and you could Terrence Marshall, James Weddle. One hundred five can be Kyle Pitts if you, if you want to take your shot on a quote generational tight end. I mean, it, it, yeah. I mean, at I think least taking the one hundred and five. The one hundred and five at least opens your options to multiple positions. Man, see all these names coming out, and I, I love all the, the the players you've named. But when I compare them to another super young player here, who's already proven it, it's really hard for me to not go. Uh, no, I'll take that guy. So I will take James Robinson for sure if it's post NFL draft and he's the. Runner. I guess that's the variable. I guess if he's locked in and you believe right, in the right, right. Right this second, I would take the 105 because there's a chance James Robinson just loses his job in, a, in two weeks. That would be rude. All right, Brian, in New York City. New York, New York City. City. When uh, you're in your rookie drafts, do you approach your picks with a best player available approach or do you draft by positional need? Nice follow-up question. If you're in a rookie Superflex Dynasty, uh, that's what he's in, a Superflex Dynasty, but if you're in a rookie draft, is it best player available or is it need? Uh, I have been scorched several times by drafting for need. Okay. So I have officially shifted, and that that's just personal bias of like bad things have happened to me. Now, maybe I just got the wrong player, but when I have drafted for need in the first round of a rookie draft, it has burnt me. So I'm just taking who I think is the best player available. I always try to do best player available. I don't – I. You know, and, and sometimes it gets you into a hole, right? Like my running backs are now weak um, on my team because I didn't go after. I took Joe Burrow instead of taking a uh, questionable late Antonio first Gibson. round no, I'm just uh, running back. And, you and did draft him over Antonio did he? Gibson. Yeah, yes. Antonio oh. Gibson yeah, in the because, second round. Because I took him in the second and everyone's like, what are you doing? And then I flexed But if you look him. at every other running back. Not didn't you draft Antonio Royce Gibson. Freeman too? Yeah, that was a couple years ago. That's what, okay. that's what I'm saying. Where I, mean, I drafted go, yeah. I drafted for need. Well, Gibson was best player available. Yeah. Royce Freeman was definitely need. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, I really try to go best player available regardless of positional need. If possible, you want to look far into the future, and, and if you can know the future, take the guy that's going to have a better future. Great advice, man. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah do that. Yeah, Brooks agrees. 
right? Yeah, it's a good strategy. Andy. All right, that'll do it for the Fantasy Footballers Podcast today. Thank you for tuning in, supporting the show, and we'll be back with, uh, well, Footcast and another episode next week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.